Okay, so then in terms of then the classical um, signs of an acute inflammatory response, uh, I quite like this because there's a bit of Latin comes into play. I, I'm, we all like a bit of Latin. Uh, all, uh, absol all about. Ab absolutely. So, uh, so the the classical signs of inflammation, which are familiar to us all, I'm sure, because an inflammatory response we'll have had somewhere, uh, is rubor, which is the redness that you see, yeah. calor, which is the, the the area becomes hot, and that's a, a manifestation of the increased blood supply to the area. Turgor, which is a swelling or, 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 or uh, induration of the area. A lot of tenseness. In, uh, exactly. And that's a manifestation of the fluid movement yes. into, the, into the tissues. And then pain or dolor. Yeah. Um, the last one I don't like so much because it doesn't rhyme. I think no. that's, that's, that's the problem, really. That's disappointing. That's, <laughs> that's Julius Caesar. That is the word. Uh, but, uh, but obviously, you know, loss of function is also part and parcel of what we see in inflammatory response. Yeah. But the, the classical four signs there are very, you know, very useful to remember. Rubor, yeah. calor, turgor, and dolor. So uh, every, everyone that's listening to this will have been a teenager, and uh, it's it's very much like having a pimple. Well, a zit, exactly. Yes, and they're, they're oh. red and hot and tender and etc. And uh, oh, so you brought them a self a self portrait. <laughs> very good of you. Well, this is a quite a, a, a dramatic example, obviously, of of a. Of a an abscess around the perianal region and it shows all those classical signs that we were talking yeah. about so there's no doubt there's a highly reddened area yeah, here it, there's a swelling yeah. uh, it would be jolly painful i'm sure mm -hmm. uh the the the, the um and uh, you know it the, looks tense and fit to burst doesn't in, it in does yeah. and and indeed it's not something you were sitting on with any with any ease so there's loss of function here as well yeah yeah and of course the surgical treatment for this is take to the theater and uh, inside and drain it absolutely get, get the pus out yeah. of there and 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 that's and that's right and that helps very much what you're doing is you're helping along that that process of resolution because mm -hmm. the body is having difficulty in in, in localizing and limiting the infection yeah. but but you can see also that um, the the body's doing it himself because this is what's called pointing yes so the abscess is coming to a head in several points, actually, yes. through the skin, so be technically it's a carbuncle, I suppose. Yes, so, and uh, and will discharge by itself, yeah. probably left to its own devices. But yeah. you can help things along and help it drain better by surgical intervention. Yeah. Then let's think then about the what are, the, are these essential components of the inflammatory response. So what we're going to do now is look at three basic areas. The first is uh, alterations in the microcirculation. The second is the, the cells, that particularly these polymorph neutrophils that we've mentioned, which are the cells which are migrating from the vascular compartment into the tissues. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, um, chemical mediators. But uh, maybe I'll put a disclaimer in right now, which is to say that I'm not a, by any means a, a biochemist, but I want to just mention and give an appreciation of how complex the, the various chemical mediators mm -hmm. are in the inflammatory mm -hmm. response. And then the movement of cell, you know, cells from the intravascular to extravascular compartments, yeah. the body helps that by making the vessels more leaky. Absolutely. Well. So the, the pores in the side of the vessel get bigger and more cells can fall out. Exactly. So the endothelial cells, the lining vessels of the blood, of, of the of particularly of the of the postcapillary venules, yeah. so called, uh, they shrink and allow bigger gaps, as you say, so that these polymorphs can get out yeah. and do yeah. their job. Which yeah. can, can be unhelpful if too much because people go into shock and, and indeed. Else, that's a different in, talk. Indeed. Okay, so um, then there's some other terms that are, are used around inflammation that are useful to, to be familiar with. So edema, which simply means an accumulation of fluid in the extravascular or outside the vessel, blood vessel compartment. Mm -hmm. An exudate, and we often talk about an inflammatory exudate, where you have uh, the edema fluid with a very high uh, protein content. Mm -hmm. And the biochemists tell us that if the content is more than 3 grams per 100 mil, that makes it an exudate, as opposed to a low protein exudate, uh, beg your pardon, a low protein uh, fluid, mm -hmm. which is then called a transudate. Mm -hmm. And this is where uh, there's, there's certainly a lot of movement of fluid out in the tissues, but not so much in the way of protein content. And this often happens when you have a serous surface, and the, the surface then is allowing fluid to move into a space, mm -hmm. but not so much protein is following it. Yeah, so um, when we're if in the abdomen, we've got a big raw area after the dissection, you can yeah. have a, a transudate, some fluid, it's a, an exudate implies inflammation. So the crucial thing is the protein content of the fluid. Indeed. So in, in clinical arena when some fluid is aspirated you might send it off to the lab and say how much proteins in that yeah. that'll tell you to the extent translate and that helps you with your differential diagnosis exactly yeah. okay okay so then in terms of then the inflammatory exudate um, what we have is two components the fluid itself and the cells as we mentioned and what is what's the what's the purpose if you like what's the 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 reasoning behind why the body mounts this uh, this uh, migration of fluid and cells into the into the interstitial interstitial space well Certainly, we can see that the fluid might dilute any toxin which is present, or any bacterial concentration which is present mm. in the tissues. It also helps to improve the flow of fluid 
uh, into the lymphatic spaces where then any antigens present can be sampled by the, the lymphoid system and again a, a, a response yeah. can be mounted. And again clinically you'll often find the regional lymph node enlarged just upstream from Absolutely. Where the thing. So if you've got a, got a, th a thorn in your thumb you might find the, uh, the lymph node at the elbow or in the axilla um, An enlarged lymph node, yeah. exactly. And, and also, this movement of fluid takes with it this, um, this soup, if you like, of the, uh, the chemotactic factors that we mentioned earlier on. So, and this helps, again, to orchestrate the, the way in which cells are migrating into the area and the ways in which vessels are, are, are changing in mm. the area. Mm. So that's the, the purpose of the fluid. And the, the polymorph neutrophils that we mentioned, uh, the polymorph neutrophil leukocytes, the PMNLs, uh, are there to destroy the microorganisms and also they themselves often in their death throes are releasing even more chemotactic agents mm -hmm. that, are, that are recruiting other cells into the area. Okay so chemotactic, so chemo is chemical, <laughs> yep. and means movement. movement. Yeah, yeah exactly so basically these are a range of, um, we'll have some sort of names mentioned later, but a range of chemical agents which promote cells move to, to migrate into an area which is affected by, yeah. by, the, by the damage. Okay so it attracts more cells to help out. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, again, just thinking about some terminology around here uh, in terms of the exudates that we've mentioned. Um, sometimes just variations on a theme here, really, depending on the site of tissue that's being affected, you have different uh, uh, adjectives. So a prolonged exudate simply means that there's a lot of polymorphs in the area. There's pus or separate, separate to yeah. change. So suppuration is pus formation, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. So this is just so that we come across the terms. Yeah. Um, often this movement of fluid uh, obviously will move uh, other proteins present in, in, in the serum, such as fibrin uh, and fi fibrinogen into the tissues. So often you will see that fibrin is being, uh, is being precipitated out. And so you get a, a, an exudate which can be very rich in fibrin, not surprisingly mm. called a fibrinous exudate. Yeah. And that will help localize something by building up a exactly. fibrin wall around it. Is that exactly. Right? It produces a bit of a meshwork which helps to trap but the, both the, the injurious, uh, you know, the, the, the bacteria potentially in the area, but also helps to uh, to give the, the other cells which are migrating into the area something to latch onto. Yeah, so it provides they, a matrix for all the rest of the... For localization. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, often because of the damage to vessels and the alterations in vessels that we see, you can get damage and bursting of these capillaries and small venules and so you make it a hemorrhagic exudate uh, so again hemorrhage can be quite a mm -hmm. dominant feature mm -hmm. if you have a, 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 a surface which normally produces mucin such as for example the bronchial tree yeah. then an inflammatory infiltrate in the bronchial tree uh, often will stimulate excess mucin production sometimes known as catarrhal or mucinous exudate yeah we've well, all experienced that i suppose we've yeah. had cold yeah that's that. so, so that's another variation and then finally uh, we mentioned uh, the serous exudate, which is more properly known really as a transudate, where the inflammatory response is relatively mild and there's relatively low protein content. Okay, so that's a transudate, so it's yeah. less than three three grams per hundred ml. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so that's that's fine. So in terms of then having sort of thought about a bit more of that nomenclature there and the terminology, let's focus a bit on the microcirculation and the alterations that occur in the microcirculation. But this is occurring, first thing to say is that this is occurring right at the very end of the, the vascular tree. So we're talking about the smallest of the arteries, the arterioles, the capillaries, and the postcapillary venules. This is the, 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 the battlefield, if you like, in right. terms of where these, these changes yeah. are occurring. And the, the, the alter alterations are essentially of vasodilatation, so the vessels getting bigger, yeah. increased... That that makes it gives you calor and, and, and a bit and of rubor, rubor yeah. indeed. Yeah. And turgor. And turgor, fluid there, indeed. Right, yeah. Okay, and so that's the first thing. The second is that this dilatation, because of the really the endothelial cell alterations, the, the cells that line these capillaries in small vessels, makes the vessels more permeable. So mm -hmm. increased permeability, fluid moving out, and the endothelial cells, uh, as I say, contracting, opening up the, the, the spaces between them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, this is a slightly busy slide, but if we just bear with it for a moment, we can again just follow through to say that we begin with uh, the injury or infection, whatever, yeah. at the beginning, and we have then this, uh, if we perhaps move on to the, the left-hand side first, saying that there's a, a formation of these various vasoactive mediators. Uh, we will leave, them, leave the terminology at that for now. Okay. But what these do is to make the vessels larger, so vasodilatation, and also to cause endothelial contraction, mm -hmm. uh, so making the, especially in the post capillary venules, making the vessels more permeable. Mm -hmm. And so the vas vasodilatation clearly leads to an increased uh, flow of, of blood in the area, mm -hmm. hyperemia, and the, the uh, vascular permeability uh, allows uh, the proteins uh, to escape out into the mm -hmm. tissues. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and so a whole range of different uh, f- uh, comp- uh, components, really, the fluid, uh, so tissue salts, complement uh, in terms of activation of complement antibodies it becomes a really quite a, a soup if yeah, you like of, yeah. of, of, of activity in, in the interstitial. So, so complements are a word to know so I don't want to go into detail because it's a, a big subject in its own yes. right but um, people should perhaps go and look up complement because it's not in the <laughs> traditional English sense of the word. No uh, and m- much as I'm not a biochemistry I'm, I'm not either an immunologist yeah. uh, but it's essentially to do with the way in which the body is responding to uh, complement and complement fixation is essential to the uh, antibody antigen uh, yeah. response. But it's sort of part of alongside the acute inflammatory process exactly yeah. okay. okay and then on the right hand side we have then uh, not only the formation of vasoactive factors mm-hmm. on the left but on the right the chemotactic factors mm-hmm. which allow the cells to migrate so this is uh, allowing particularly the polymorph neutrophil to uh, to get into the tissues mm-hmm. by a process called margination and migration mm-hmm. we have a little diagram on that in a moment and there are Again, a very complex biochemistry here, but there are a number of adhesion molecules which actually sit on the endothelium, which allow the polymorphs to latch on to the mm. endothelium and then get out into the tissues where they're needed. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so what happens is there's acute inflammation. You increase the ways in for the um, neutrophils, etc., yep. and all yep. the other stuff that you need. And then once they're there, they say, "Hey, it's, it's pretty bad here. Yep. Send reinforcements, <laughs> and right. they come. And then the vessels themselves get a bit sticky and grab them as they fly past. Exactly, and check and, them out uh, and, exactly. uh, and get them to work. Exactly. So the okay. whole thing is very, it's a very sort of remarkably orchestrated. Mm. But it works uh, in the way in which it works.